and welcome back to Carp Ontario to the fairgrounds here. We're just getting underway. We've got Delisle here in the beautiful white pinstripes and Newfoundland Physio and Co. Uh, they're in the blacks today. And a swing and a miss at that change up. It's been a beautiful day weather-wise here. A little hot if you ask the players, but starting to cool down here into the evening with a little bit of a breeze. And we've got a great couple more games coming at you. And that's hit hard out to left field, hooking foul out of play. If you haven't been down to the Carp Fairgrounds this week, I uh, encourage you to do so. We've got a good crowd on hand. We've had a great slate of games today. And two strikes here to count. Pitcher set. And that's up and out. Leading off of the Pride's Will Major. He's over at first base. And that's fouled off to stay alive. On the mound for the Newfoundland Physio and Company, number 10, Logan Power. Logan Power on the slab this afternoon for the Newfoundland team. Who I saw earlier, we do have some fellow Newfoundlanders living in Ontario that uh, made their way down to the, to the fairgrounds to check it out. Swung hard and passed the shortstop out to the grass. He'll round and the brakes are on and we've got a, a leadoff single for Will Major. Major's been hitting well all tournament, Scott. No He's a uh, lead classic leadoff batter one. that reaches base Troy, quite frequently. Mm -hmm. And he got his week going uh, Tuesday with a home run against the host squad. Um, and now is kind of when the guys want to really start taking off on their hitting, eh, Adam? Absolutely. Got to get things going quickly and uh, get your team in the game right off the top, right off the hop. Troy Kuzmeka stepping in. Showing a bunt. Delisle looking to get on the board early. We got uh, a two and three record for Delisle and a three and two for the Newfoundland team. What have you seen so far this week from either side, Adam? Well, both of them have been competitive. It depends on the day. Um, you know, the the top two teams have certainly been Owen Sound Selects and the Tavistock Merchants, but these two teams will be in the mix for a medal. That's for sure. Absolutely, and. Like all good fastball teams, it comes down to pitching, but the way we've seen it this week, hitting is going to be just as important. Absolutely. There's been a lot of strong hitting games, and uh, I think sometimes, Scott, as we both know, in a round-robin style tournament, sometimes teams will hide their top pitchers against certain teams and save them for the medal round or the playoff round, and I, I think that's what we saw in the previous game where um, the top two pitchers for Owen Sound and Tavistock uh, didn't start the game, so... Sometimes happens that the, the hitters can take advantage of those situations, but things may change in the playoff round. Yeah, absolutely. And through the catcher, but off the, the umpire's foot for a favorable bounce, and that'll keep Major at first. We got a 2-2 two -two count here to the number two hitter, Kuzmeka. That's popped up. The infield, second baseman will call for it, and we've got one away. Brent Weeb is going to come to the plate here now. Now batting the shortstop, number 19, Brent Weeby. Weeb's had a really strong tournament so far. This guy can hit the ball, Scott. See what he can do here in the first with one away. There's a runner on first. Coming into today, he was batting over 500, so definitely somebody that Newfoundland's gonna have to pitch carefully. And a hard shot right at the third baseman. Scrambling to get to his feet. Majors back to first, and we've got two away. Great defensive play there, Adam. 
Yeah, Mark Stock has played excellent so far, both uh, in the field and at the plate. He had a huge Nobody bomb yesterday. Uh, he, he's definitely one of the top players to watch for Newfoundland Physio and Co. Yeah, coming into the day with a couple home runs. Looks like he kept the hot streak going earlier with the, uh, an 8-7 win over Team Quebec for the Newfoundland team. And the runner goes, and that pitch will bounce, and Major's in there standing up. Oakley Durham, the batter here, he's batting cleanup for Delisle this afternoon. Um, runner in scoring position here. And with the importance of this game for seeding for tomorrow, um, this game will be for third place. Potentially, yes. Uh, it's Saskatchewan, or excuse me, Quebec. Team Quebec's over on uh, Diamond 2 right now. They're playing the host Ottawa Valley Chiefs. When I left to come over and meet you, Scott, uh, Quebec was up 2 nothing into the fifth, so they could potentially be evening their record at 3-3 three and three with a win over Ottawa Valley. Now, Team Quebec did get the win in terms of a tie-breaking scenario over Delisle, a close 6-5 game yesterday. That pitch is low, good block by the catcher. Now teams are starting to uh, figure each other out. You know, teams from all over the country, they've been able to see teams throughout the week that maybe they've become unfamiliar with. Um, now everybody has a pretty good idea what everybody's working with. Yes, I've been here all week, Scott, and I've seen coaches from other teams coming to scout games, taking notes and making sure that they're uh, up to speed on who the best players are for their opposition. And I'm sure that they'll be watching the live stream and listening to us as well to scout. <laughs> well, we are doing our best. There was a pitch at the knees called for a strike. And that one's hit through the right side of the infield. Major's gonna round, no throw in, and Delisle off to a quick one nothing lead. So Oakley Durham coming through for Delisle here with a clutch base hit and an RBI knock. Now batting the third baseman, number one, Max Major. We'll bring up the first baseman here, Max Major. I believe Max actually plays third. Two away here in the top of the first. On a crisp, with the humidity, 30 degree weather, according to our site meteorologist. Oh. Come in, past the first baseman off his glove. That'll be a fair ball. They're going to send him home. No throw on the play. Great wheels by Durham to go first to third on a play like that. Good aggressive base running here early for Delisle. And with how close the games have been all week, um, every run is going to be important here. Kobe Clark's going to come up to bat now. Coming to bat for Saskatchewan. The catcher number 18, Kobe Clark. He'll be doing the catching in the bottom of half of this inning. Braden Harris is scheduled to be on the slab for Delisle here in the bottom half. Runner at second base, two away here. Pitch just outside. Having teams from all across the country, we're also blessed with umpires from all across the country. Um, we have a home plate umpire from Alberta for this match. Nibbles away at that outside corner and gets the call there. And one on one count. And Andrew Godin is umpiring first base. He used to umpire in our league here, Scott, uh, but he recently moved back to his home province of New Brunswick. So we have a crew consisting of Alberta on the dish, as you mentioned, with Malcolm Murray, Andrew Godin from New Brunswick on first, and the third base ump is Jean Marc Lalibitze from Quebec. And it looks like Blue is out on the mound 
looking to do with something with the slab. Now the umpires have been requesting players to stay out of the circle when the umpire is visiting the pitcher. It looks like for this game, Physio and Co. have been granted permission to come in on this huddle. Now there is a pitching shoot uh, for those unfamiliar with the game of fastball that the pitcher has to be moving forward towards the plate as opposed to side to side. Kobe Clark clears out his batter's box. He gets set with a runner on third base and two out. Two balls to the batter. Pitch from power, that's out. Clark getting a good hitter's count here. Looks down to the coach. Appears to maybe have been given a green light if he likes this one. And that'll miss low. I'll say in the games that I've watched, Scott, a lot of green lights on 3-0 counts. There's a lot of guys, they get the pitch they want, they're going to drive it. Now batting the right fielder, number 16, Dylan Finbach. Even, even with a 3-0 count. Now with the round robin and every team playing six games, seeing everybody, it really is a good opportunity for players to get loose and get settled and get hot going into to the weekend and the medal round. Dylan Kivan Lowy coming in. Apologize on the pronunciation of that one. He'll be in right field today. Pitch from power. Pitch is called outside and runner will advance. So two runners in scoring positions now. I note that Green, the catcher for the Newfoundland team, is a lefty. I've seen a couple of lefty catchers here this week, and not something you see a whole lot, but seems to be a trend at this year's Softball Canada Under-23 Men's Canadian National Championship. 1-2 count. Power set, looking to get out of this long inning. And that's fouled off. Good change up thrown there. Just missing high. 2-2 two -two count. Power set. And that's chopped to the shortstop. A high one, gonna have to hustle. Good play there made by Liam Shea to get out of the inning. And we'll be back at the bottom of the first. Saskatchewan scores two runs in their top.
Welcome back for here Saskatchewan. for the bottom of the first. Number 23, Braden Harris. Braden Harris has the mound Coming for Delisle here. For Newfoundland Physio and Company. The center fielder, number 20, Jordan Pomeroy. Jordan Pomeroy, the batter here for Physio and Co. He's having himself a good week as well. He's an elite level hitter, Scott. He, as you know, plays at the ISC level. So, you know, U23 is um, uh, an excellent level of fast pitch softball, but ISC is even a level above, and he excels at that level. Yeah, he's scheduled to compete the ISCs in Quad Cities with Bear Creek Express. Love a visit to the pitcher from the Blue Crew, just making sure they get off on the right start. And the mechanics are compliant with Softball Canada rules. Takes a pitch for a ball inside. Looks like the entire Tavistock team's taking in this game from center field, Scott. Good to see a team who I believe has their day finished sticking around, maybe enjoying in a little bit of the festivities that has to be offered here at the Carp Fairgrounds. The uh, concessions are set up in the outdoor rink in right now field. Now the shortstop, number nine, Liam Shea. Tavistock actually has one to go. They'll be playing the Alveston Aces at 7.30 tonight on Diamond 2. We don't have streaming capability, unfortunately, on Diamond 2, but um, all the games on Diamond 1 will be streamed. Liam Shea, the batter now, he made a nice play at short to get Physio and Co. out of the top of the first. Showing bunt and pulling back for a ball here. The attention to detail uh, is very much evident at this level. Um, you rarely see a player forget to look down at their coach and, and get the signal. A good bunt in front. And Delisle's able to move around the infield nicely. Get the out at first. Good sack bunt there. Now batting the third baseman, number 12, Mark Stack. Mark Stack has hit a few leadoff home runs so far this week. He had a two-homer game over the Chiefs yesterday in their 9-0 win. So I think it's the right guy at the right time here for Newfoundland looking to get on the board. Chop foul down the first baseline. Mark Stack plays for the CBS Storm in the Molson Coors St. John Intermediate Men's Fast Pitch League. That's one of the best leagues in Canada. Fast Pitch Hotbed out in Newfoundland. They're always competing at every level of the game. And it's a great honor to have them out in CARP this week. I was able to touch base with friend of the program, Polly Marr, today to check on a relative potentially playing. There was no blood relation, but we do need to shout out Polly as he has played on this field a few times at the Gil Reed Memorial Tournament. Absolutely, it was always a pleasure to have the fellas from Newfoundland come out to the Gil Reed Memorial here in Carp. Excellent fast pitch players and a lot of fun to meet up with before and after the game. Absolutely, now with two out, another Mar, Ryan Mar, at the plate, runner on third base. And the pitch from Harris is in there at the knees for a called strike. And hit hard. Foul down the third baseline with a clap of encouragement from the third base coach. A good count for the pitcher Harris against a good hitter. We'll see how he comes at him. Up two in the count. And a good waste pitch there. Bring the count to one and two. Noah Din, the DP, is on deck. And swinging strike three to get Delisle out of the inning.
No runs for Newfoundland in the bottom of the first. We're back here for the top of the second. 2 nothing. Delisle leads. And we've got Jordan Perron, Ryan Bicknell, and Will Major, the top of the order, do back up. Power set. That'll be up and out for ball one. Now a good first inning for Delisle. Getting out to a 2 nothing lead and getting through seven batters, making power work. Good, hard dippy there. Bring the count to 1-1. One one. One, one for power is low. Ground at the third baseman. And a foul ball. Run the count to two and two. Power also pitches for that same team that Mark Stack plays on, the CBS Storm of the St. John's Intermediate League. A couple other players as well. Get their regular weekly fix of fast pitch softball in. The 2 2 is low to run it full. Delilah's done a great job of working the counts and really making power throw early here. And a swinging miss, and that'll be one down. Do up the DP, Jordan Perron. Now batting the center fielder, number 22, Ryan Ooh. Bicknell. My apologies, Ryan Bicknell. He's out in center field today. Bicknell having a good week as well, batting 375 coming into the day. Good hard pitch there from Power to get up one strike. Power steps back. Hard grounder past the diving second baseman. He's going to look for two. A good throw. And on the money. A great relay in from the outfield. Gets the runner at second base. Two out now, and they'll turn the lineup over. So a big out with a dangerous top of the order coming up. Tried to roll up, run on Pomeroy's arm, and it seven, Will Major. turned out to be a decision that was costly. Yeah, we spoke in the in the first inning about the aggressive base running showed by Delisle. Um, cost them there, but I don't think they're going to be letting up as power seems to be starting to groove. Major in the first let off the game on a single, scored a run.
Nobody on here and two out. Pitch is low from power. Power into the windup. That's a fly out to right field and hauled in by the right fielder. So still 2 nothing after an inning and a and half, Scott. Saskatchewan in the top of the second. Come to bat for Newfoundland. Din, Kenny, and Hamilton. We're back here for the bottom of the second. Noah Din leading off with a couple of bats this week and, and a home run with three RBIs coming into today. And he'll take a ball outside to start the at-bat. Due up this inning, we have Din, Nathan Kinney, and Jordan Hamilton for the Newfoundland Physio and Company. And Harris comes right back with a pitch on the outside corner for a called strike. 1-1 to the batter. And we do have an update from Diamond 2. Quebec is leading the host Ottawa Valley Chiefs 5-0 in that game is in the 7th inning. Harris seems to be working the outside part of the plate. 3-1 count here for Noah Din. That one will miss just on the outside corner for a leadoff walk. It's two innings in a row. He's walked the leadoff batter. That can sometimes come back and bite you. It didn't last. In the left fielder, number yeah, eight, it didn't last Nathan inning, but Kenny. not a good habit to get into. Nathan Kenny coming into the day with a 364 average. Four hits. Shows Bunt, pulls it back for a called strike. Newfoundland looking to get on the board here after the two run first inning for the Delal Pride. And swinging, shallow fly out to center. And a routine play for the first out of the inning. Showing bunt to get the infield Nine moving and seven, swinging Jordan away Hamilton. shortly thereafter. Jordan Hamilton due up. 
the come on hammy chance come in from the Newfoundland dugout. And a good hard pitch on the outside part of the plate for a called strike. Good play by the third baseman at two. They'll try for two. Not in time at first, so two out and a runner on. And Adam, we're now working into August in the fastball calendar. And for a lot of these players, this is the tournament they've been prepping for all year. Absolutely, and there's actually uh, a subsequent tournament that many of the players will be at as well at the Canada Summer Games representing their province. I know several of the players uh, here today are representing either Team Ontario, Team Quebec, Team Newfoundland, or Team Saskatchewan at the Canada Summer Games in Niagara in a couple of weeks. So certainly August is a huge month for these young fast pitch softball players. Aiden Green, the batter. It's Jordan Hamilton just gingerly Checks on an ankle after running hard through first base. Looks like he's all right and he'll stay in the ball game. Two out here for Delisle. Runner on first base. And that's hit up the middle and a good play by the second baseman. He'll take him himself to retire the side. Back here in Carp for the top of the third inning. Delisle Protection Pride to bat. Troy Kozmenka to batter. Kozmenka's playing first in this game, but he's done a little bit of pitching in the tournament as well, Scott. Big man coming off the slab. One ball. Pitch from Powers, hit out to right field. And a beat on it out there in right. And one away. Brant Weeb. Now batting the shorts. Two up. Number 19, Brant Weeby. He lined out to the third baseman his first time up. He scorched that one pretty good last time. A handy play over there by the third baseman. Yeah, Stack played it well, you're right. Yeah. 
That was less scorched. Less scorched back up to the number one position. He'll throw it over for a 1-3 put out. And an efficient inning here for power with two away. Now batting the left fielder, number six, Oakley Durham. Oakley Durham due up. He singled for an RBI in the first inning, bringing home Will Major. Power set and steps back. And a change up high for ball one. You know, we have to tip our cap to both the locals coming out and people traveling in for this tournament. Um, the gate's been fairly steady all week and I expect that'll probably pick up on the weekend for the medal round. I would think so. Tomorrow's going to be a big night here too as well. The seating round and some entertainment and some local games. I'm looking forward to tomorrow most definitely, Scott. Now everybody's done well with their jobs, but we do need to tip our caps to the bartenders who have kept all the beer and refreshments cold mm -hmm. for both visitors and players, coaches. Three balls here, the count. And as the sun peeks back away from the clouds, power comes back with a hard strike. And he'll lose him. So with two away, Delisle gets a base runner. Now batting the third baseman, number one, Max Major. Max Major due up here. He had a double and an RBI in the first inning. Dodgers out of the way. A quick snap down throw to first. And he's back in safely. Thanks to all the folks who are watching on the live stream. If you have any pro tips for Scott and I on how to improve our broadcast, feel free to put them in the comments. <laughs> and grounder out to the second baseman. They'll take the short play to first. And after two and a half complete, Delisle two. Newfoundland Physio and Code No Score. We'll be right back. Braden Harris takes his last warm-up pitch. And Joel Nash due up. We've got Nash, and then the lineup's going to be turned over. As Newfoundland feels out Braden Harris. 
And right down Broadway for strike one. Air set. Nash bounces one through the middle of the infield for a leadoff base hit. Nice attempt by Wee, but a dive there, but it just bounced right over his glove. So Physio and Company will look to get now something going here. Fielder number 20, Jordan Pomeroy. Jordan Pomeroy due up, as we mentioned earlier. One of the stronger bats we'll see this week. Plenty of experience at the senior level. And that's hit hard and off the second baseman's glove into the outfield. They're going to send Nash over to third. And Pomeroy keeps the hot streak going. Will Major did a good job just to even get a bit of a glove on that one, Scott. That was a full extension. Good effort. Hard hit ball. And now is probably as good a time as any, Scott, to mention our title sponsor here at the Softball Canada Under-23 Men's National Fast Pitch Championship. That would be Alterna Savings. They were a very generous sponsor that uh, helped the committee get through a difficult couple of years with COVID cancellations and such, and we're very pleased that well, Alterna that stuck with us. Number nine, William Shea. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's been over two years of planning with two cancellations. But the host committee was determined to put on a great event, and so far they have. There's a strike from Harris. Liam Shea, the batter, did a good sacrifice play in the first inning. First and third, nobody out. The pride respecting the potential bunt. Pomeroy able to get a healthy lead over there first. And that's dribbled over. No play at second. They'll check the runner and go to one. So the same purpose as a sack. Moves the runner over and there is two ducks in the pond. And Mark Stack. Another hot bat the for the Newfoundland team. Mark Stack. So Newfoundland in the black uniforms tonight. They were in the whites this morning playing in the drizzling rain. So understandable. They decide to go to a dry set. Ball low to start the at-bat. And dribbled foul. Stack looking to do what he's been doing all week. And that's drive in runs. A pair of homers coming into the day. Had another one today. And a pitch low from Harris. Two and one the count. Stack will look for something to hit. A good hitter's count. Harris steps back. And that he'll do. Hard back and off the fence. That'll bring one in. Pomeroy comes. And we've got a tie ball game on a two-run double. Mark Stack stays hot. Now Adam Palmer had to hang on there as it went over the right fielder's head, respecting now the tag with only one out. Good Ryan piece of base Long. running. Yep, excellent, excellent base running there. Need to make sure that you don't get hung up. Ryan Marr, the batter. Batting 500 coming into today.
step back from Harris. The pitch. Pitch on the outside, touching the block is called for a strike. And that's it through the left side of the infield. They're going to send him home. Here comes the throw. Throw high. And RBI single for Mr. Marr. Advances to second on the throw. Now we've seen a lot of hard hit balls on the ground today, Adam. Kind of a testament to show how good these players are and the importance of putting balls in play. Absolutely. Very focused at the plate. Squaring balls up, especially with runners in scoring position. And just like that, here we are in the bottom of the third. We've got a 3-2 Newfoundland Physio and Co. lead. Delisle will call time, have a word with Harris and the rest of the infield. A little inspiration to make sure this inning doesn't get out of hand on them. While Saskatchewan huddles up here, we uh, had a question on their Facebook site asking about the illegal pitch calls from the UMF officials, um, asking whether it was being called for out of the shoot. I, I, I believe some of the calls, we're not 100% sure to be honest. All we you know is that some illegal pitches were called. Um, I think some of them might have been for out of the shoot. There might have been others for perhaps not pausing the requisite amount of time. Um, thankfully, there hasn't been too many illegal pitches, and um, the boys have been allowed to continue um, playing the game as opposed to being continuously called with illegal pitches. Yeah, Adam, speaking with some officials before the, the game, they'd really been focusing on the pause, and what that is is whenever the, the pitcher sets the ball, his hand in his glove with the ball, stepping back and pausing right there before entering his delivery. Pitch is low for a ball. Noah Din, the batter. Fly to center. And a catch and that runner will hold up at second. Got two away now here for the Newfoundland Physio and Company. Now batting the left fielder, number eight, Nathan Kenny. And Nathan Kenny, the batter. He was put out on a fly to center his last at bat. And that's fouled hard off the catcher to the backstop. Shook Clark up a little bit, I think, but I'm sure he'll be fine. As you well know, Scott, catchers take a lot of abuse back there sometimes. We do, and you'll see he's wearing the two-piece helmet. And Although technology's come away with the old goalie hockey helmet style mask, the purpose of the lighter style is that when the ball hits that cage, it should just pop off as opposed to taking the whole brunt on the cage. Sounds a lot like grade 12 physics to me, Scott, so let's move on to a different topic. <laughs> Two strikes for Harris here as he steps back. And he'll nibble on the outside. Nathan Kenny chokes up here with two strikes. And he's popped that up. Left fielder's calling for it. And he's there to make the play. So at the end of three, we've got Newfoundland Physio and Co. three. And Delisle Protection Pride, two.
number 18, Kobe Clark. And Kobe Clark in the batter's box now. Power back on the slab for Newfoundland. And that's low for ball one. Clark walked in his first appearance. Scott stole second base. Sounds a lot like a Scott Conroy at bat. The first part, yes, the stolen base. Not for many years. And that pitch is outside. Dylan Kivlug is on deck. And I'd like to apologize to any of his family listening back home for my mispronunciation the first time through. 2-0 pitch and a swing and a miss for Clark. You really should work on your Norwegian, Scott. As soon as West Carlton Electric gets a team in a tournament in Norway, <laughs> I will happily brush up. <laughs> Working on it. 2-1, just hit to the shortstop. Good play there and a throw over to first for a traditional 6-3 put out. Shea made that look easy. Took a, a tough yeah, hop. We're lucky to have a great view from behind home plate here, elevated. And as he came in and attacked the ball, hopped to the right side of his body. Vin Lug, the batter. He was put out 6-3 to three his first at bat. Power continuing to nibble low in the zone here. Won't get it again. Teammates preaching on. Good spot. Go back there. It's one thing you'll notice if you're hopping onto a fastball stream for the first time. Lots of infield, outfield chatter going on. One of the great tradition, traditions about fast pitch softball is the urging on your teammates with unique nicknames and suggestions and so on. Makes it a lot of fun. 3-0 pitch. Now Adam, Coming from your history in the game, is there any real good nicknames that stand out? <laughs> there are a few, Scott, and I don't think I'd broadcast them live <laughs> on the live stream. We'll wait till the end of the half inning. Fouled off, and caught by the catcher. The pitch from Power. And that's low for a walk. Now batting the designated player number nine, Jordan Perrin. Jordan Perrin coming to the plate here. He struck out his first step bat. One away here. Runner on first, pitch from power. And a good drop ball on the outside corner for a called strike. Oh, off the end of the bat. Oh, I think we're going to see a call here. We're going to see an infraction. The second baseman had came in. Ryan Meyer to make the play. Kivlog running from first to second. Interfered no, on that. So he will be called Ryan out. Decknell. So Perron and Kivlog trade places. Two away. And Adrian Green will be due up to bat. My apologies, Ryan Bicknell. Bicknell with a single his first time through. Tried to extend that single into a double and was thrown out at second base. 
Now you'll notice on the corner of your screens, if you can see it, in traditional fast pitch softball way, those corners of the outfield, they're often used as a bullpen for other pitchers to warm up. Bicknell working the count, power set. Takes the ball high. Warming up in left field for Newfoundland Physio and Co. is Lyndon Power. I'm not sure if he and Logan are brothers or cousins or maybe not related. There are a lot of people with the surname Power in Newfoundland. Perhaps we can send our crack research team out to find out the answer to that question. Nice play there by Liam Shea at that shallow fly ball out touching the grass. All right, and we're back here for the bottom of the fourth inning. Jordan Hamilton due up. The fielder number eight, uh, sorry, now batting the first baseman number seven, Jordan Hamilton. Braden Harris back out on the slab. I want to give a special shout out to my friend Neil Murphy, who's watching. Great to see you on the stream, Murph Dog. That's outside for a ball. Hamilton hit into a fielder's choice last time up and came up, looked like a he was a little bit sore, so hopefully he'll be able to round the bases. And Harris comes back with a strike. One on one the count. Three two, Newfoundland leading. And a good curving rise ball there fouled away. Speaking of viewers, Scott, I see new grandpa Jerry McIntyre also watching on the live stream. Congrats to Jerry and Tracy and, of course, Matthew and Alyssa on the new member of the McIntyre family. Jerry, a well-known color commentator with your TV, comes to the Mixburg field. And a hard foul down the right field line. And Jerry had to work with the confines of the Mixburg Park, which is a little bit darker than here at the Carp Fairgrounds. Must have very keen eyes, Jerry. The dark spots between first and third <laughs> causes havoc for fielders, infielders, and spectators. And broadcasters. <laughs> now when the field was built, I don't believe there was any intentions of having streamed games. <laughs> Fairly confident of that. Yeah. Hamilton battles as his teammates root him on. 
And another foul ball down the third base side. Stopped there by Max Major and thrown back to his pitcher, Braden Harris. Harris set. Pitch, swinging through, wins the battle. One down here in the Newfoundland bottom of the fourth. We had something, we had something in the previous game, Scott, that I'd never seen before, and I've been around fastball for a while. The batter struck out, the ball bounced, the catcher caught it clean, he threw it to third because it was a left-handed batter, the batter proceeded to run to first base because the ball wasn't caught clean, and the third baseman threw him out at first. It was a 2-5-3 put out. Wow. Quite interesting. Adrian Green hits one hard up the middle. We'll stop right there for a one-out single. That'll bring up Joel Nash. Coming to bat the right fielder, number 44, Joel Nash. Nash, his first time through. Scored a run and hit a single. And he'll bunt that. Now you notice the ball bouncing back and hitting Nash. And as long as he is in the batter's box, there's no issues with that. As he's running out of the batter's box, if the ball seems to hit him when he's left the box, batters called out. One of the reasons I think the slap bunt has kind of been stayed away from. Yeah, you don't see that as much as you did back in the day, Scott. And that's hit deep out to left field. Left fielder battles the sun and makes a nice catch. Two away here for the top of the order. Jordan Pomeroy now up. As Adrian Green still stands on first base. Now batting the center fielder, number 20, Jordan Pomeroy. A lot of balls in play, Scott. We're uh, almost through four complete innings, and there's been three strikeouts. That's it. And as we both know in fast pitch, it can often be a lot of strikeouts, but a lot of balls in play. Hmm. And another way to speed up the game, the two out catchers rule. The catchers on base. They can proceed to the dugout to get that gear on. Last recorded out. We'll go over to first base. And Pomeroy dribbles that over to first baseman and Delal's out of the inning. So, no runs on one hit, one left on, and we have a 3 2 Newfoundland lead after no four complete.
And we're back, power back on the slab and the top due up here for Delisle. Will Major, one for two on the afternoon. Foul back to the screen. After that initial first inning when he gave up a couple of runs, Power really seems to have found his groove, Scott. He's only given up one hit in the next three innings and a pair of walks. That's it. Yeah, he's faced two batters over the minimum since that time. A couple nice defensive plays. Two on the count. Power steps back. And foul back right at our foreheads. Now the Carp Fairgrounds plays host to the Ottawa Valley A's, a team out of the Gopho League in the Ottawa area. They'll be playing tomorrow night against Fitzroy Harbor here on Diamond 2. And foul back by Major again to stay alive. Yeah, it was nice of the organizing committee to invite the local men's intermediate league, Scott, to participate in the festivities. And as you said, uh, Fitzroy Harbor West Carlton Electric will be playing the Ottawa Valley A's at 7 p.m. And then the Mixburg Twins will be playing the Quio Flyers in a matchup that actually counts in the Greater Ottawa Fastball League standings. And Major drives that out to left field and they'll relay that in. And we've got a leadoff single. As we had in the first... That'll bring up the first, the first baseman, baseman number 20, Troy Kuzminka. Kuzminka looks down for the sign. Nobody out here. In the top of five. Shows bunt. That's foul back to the screen. And we know how precious these bunt situations can be. And you saw the little bat slap there by Kuzmenka. You only get two cracks at it. With the third strike being a foul off a bunt, the batter is called out. And he'll watch that low. Major goes, throw down, and he's in there safely. So serving the same purpose and saving an out. Kuzmenka now with a 1-1 one -one count. Power set. And a swinging strike. As so we get into the third time through the order, pitchers become more familiar with the batters. The same goes for the batters with the pitchers. We'll see if either team can pick up any tips off the other pitcher. As Adam mentioned in the last half inning, three strikeouts. We've seen some great defensive plays, some good hard hits. Put a bend on that one, Scott. The rise ball spin. Oh, with a little curve to the outside. Get that ball off the end of the bat. Fouled off by Kuzmeka. Neither Power nor Kuzmeka seeming to give in here. Power takes a deep breath. Step back from Power. And that's low and through. And Major will move up with no throw. So 
Will Major getting a good hop off those balls in the dirt. Base Dancing. running, base running like that's so important, Scott. You get that single, and you get your way around to third by being aggressive on those balls to get away from the catcher. Yeah. Get yourself into an optimal scoring position. And that one's hit deep but out into left field. Did not really matter which base he was on with that one. No, that ball was hit on the screws by Kuzmeka. Right into diamond two over the 230 left field cent fence. And just like that, Delisle will go up 4-3. Well struck softball from the two hole hitter for Delisle. And a good at bat there by Kuzmeka. It was fouling a few off. And finding the pitch he wanted. So with nobody out, Brant Weeb will come to the plate. Now batting the shortstop, number 19, Brant Weeby. Lined out hard to the third base in his first at bat, and then had a dribbler out to the pitcher, his second. Now Scott, the Saskatchewan team had problems locating their bats. I'm just going to say Weeb is using my bat right now, my 26-ounce uh, Easton Ronan. So if he gets a successful hit, it's clearly... Oh, he's out. Okay. Well, I thought maybe my bat was going to give him a hand there. Hard ground ball to the second baseman who got dirty for it. Flips it over to the first baseman. Now the Saskatchewan the team had the mailed six, out their bats via courier service as they were flying in and with the current state of travel. Unfortunately, they've yet to arrive here in CARP for them. So the local community has come together to get some bats for the team to play with. And that's low for ball one. One away here in the top half of the fifth inning. You're just joining us. Two run home one for Delisle. We'll put them up four to three. Another pitch down from Power. Oakley Durham the batter. Take ball three. Reached safely in two at bats. Get a single and an RBI and scored in the first. Reached on a walk in the third inning. Taking all the way for strike one. Three ones hit hard and foul down the third base side. That'll run the count full. Oakley Durham with four RBIs coming into today's match. Added to that in this game. Hard hit grounder back to the pitcher. And Power will fling that over to the first base side. With two out, the batter is the third baseman, number one, Max Major. Max Major due up here with two out. Major with a double and an RBI in the first. One and two on the afternoon. Power set. A nice bunt there. Just dribbles foul. Moves pretty quick down the line from the left side there, Scott. Yeah, I'm sure he's bunted for many singles over the years. He'll tuck his shirt back in. Grab his bat. <laughs> Politely asked the umpire if it was just foul. Grounder hard to the first baseman. 
Jordan Hamilton will pick that up, step on first. So two runs on two hits and no errors. And we've got a 4-3 ball game. Scores two runs. Coming to the bottom of the fifth. Off the bottom of the fifth for Newfoundland. The shortstop, number nine, Liam Shea. Shea, Stack, and Meyer do up here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Braden Harris continues to slow this up for the Lyle Protection Pride. We call it strike on the outside corner. Is low, even the count at ones. Newfoundland's played from behind in this game until a big third inning. And that's foul down the third base side. You were mentioning earlier, Scott, about how busy August can be. Right at the same time, about two hours, a little over two hours from here, is the U-20 Men's Softball Canada National Championship in Napanee. All reports that going well there. That ball is hit deep out to center field. And a nice play out in center field. It was a nice catch by Ryan McNell. Also this week, the, the U-15 boys Stack. nationals are being held in Wilmot, Ontario, which is just west of Kitchener, about six hours west of here. And next week, out in Saskatoon, in Saskatchewan, not too far from Delisle, from my understanding, the U-17 Softball Canada Boys National Championship will be held. <laughs> So with one out here, Mark Stack due up. He had a double and a couple RBIs his last time up. And that pitch is outside. Harris set the pitch. Stack dribbles one through the right side of the infield for a base hit. The hot streak continues, Adam. Indeed, yeah. Mark Stack's a threat at the plate every time he's there. With one out, the batter is the second baseman, number 23, Ryan Marr. Newfoundland physio and Cole really rely on his bat in the three hole in their order. He's consistently hit there in every game that I've seen them play. Ryan Marr batting fourth for the Newfoundland team. He's having himself a heck of a week as well. Yes, definitely. One for two on the day with an RBI. That's outside for a ball. 
Marin Stack looked down at the third base coach for the sign. One away here in the bottom half of the fifth. And that'll be bunted. Harris will make the play over to first base. They'll keep Stack at second. So we've got two away now. Bringing up Noah Din. With two out, the batter is the designated player, number 19, Noah Din. Now you'll hear on the PA the designated player announcement. Often using fast pitch for the pitcher to pitch and rest between innings as opposed to hitting. Used in both those cases for both teams today for this game, Scott. But I have seen it used for other players. Uh, the Quebec team uses it for their third baseman. And Owen Sound in the previous game used it for their center fielder as defensive only in their pitcher hit. But I would agree most, most frequently for the pitcher. And that's dribbled up to shortstop. Tough play at first and a good scoop and they get him. Stack runs home to touch home plate, but on the force play, that'll be no damage. So no runs on a hit, and we'll go to the top of the sixth. Welcome back to the Carp Fairgrounds. Delisle up here in the top of the six, sporting a 4-3 lead. And pitch from power is up and out for a ball. Now the sun going down here in Carp. Power lifts those sunglasses on top of his hat. The 1-0. That's low. Oh, Colby Clark. Must have got hit by the pitch. He's going to wear that one on the lower foot. So while we have a break here, thanks to all the folks in the live stream chat that are complimenting the commentators. We appreciate your kind words. Hopefully, I know some of the people making the comments. I hope you're not making them sarcastically. Uh, but we do, we do appreciate your, uh, your, your feedback. Scott and I have never worked as a team before. We have, we've probably done some commentating around a campfire or something, not necessarily a live stream, but um, we both enjoy fast pitch softball and um, what a great way to watch the game. Now the story's at the campfire. Usually there's no cameras around. The same could be said about the Moose Lodge in Elkland. Indeed. Dylan Kvinlau. Dylan Quinlog's up now. Got a run around first after the hit by a pitch. Corners in tight, anticipating a bunt. And he attempts at the bunt. Nothing there. Brief meeting for Pride and Company on the mound there. Going over the game plan, giving Power some words of encouragement.
That's dribbled to short. A good play there. Short and over to first base. Serving the same purpose as a sack bunt. That was hit hard. And a nice scoop by Liam Shea. Yeah, Shea's made a couple of nice plays With there. One short. Out of the batter is the designated player, number nine, Jordan Perrin. Jordan Perrin to bat with one out. Colby Clark stands at second there on your screen, number 18. Power leans back. And swing and a miss for strike one. Put some good zip on that one. We've been treated to great day games all day here, Adam, but this one especially has been a great display of fast pitch softball and what the sport has to offer. Good defense, good hitting, and good pitching. And that's low to even the count at ones. Power the starter for Newfoundland Physio and Company. Going into the sixth inning here. Bullpen start to warm for both teams. On the other diamond, Tavistock and the Alvis and Aces team begin to warm. Dribbler over to third, checks him over to first, and they get the runner. Nice play by Stack there. So two away here in the top of the six. And as we see here, the two-out catcher two rules. Kobe Clark jogs in to get the equipment back Ryan on. Bicknell. Ryan Bicknell due up. Bicknell having a good week at the plate so far. Batting three and a quarter coming in today as we throw back a ball to the infield bullpen out in left field. Power set. Called strike on the outside corner. Our listeners are coming through for us yet again here, Scott. Listener Missy Miller Power lets us know that Logan and Lyndon are indeed brothers. Thanks for that. So a family connection here. And a changeup hit to the second baseman. Nice stab. They got the runner at first base to the retire of the side. All the infielders got to show their defensive chops there, Scott. Great plays by the shortstop, the third baseman, and the second baseman. Ryan Meyer on that. So through five and a half complete innings here. We've got Delisle no four, Newfoundland and Physioco the the three. They we'll be back in just a moment.
Welcome back to the Carp Fairgrounds here in a 4-3 game in the bottom of the six. We've got a new pitcher on for the Lyle Protection Pride. Caden Schmatz will come on. Harris had a good outing, Scott. Through five innings. Allowed three runs and six hits. Struck out a couple of batters. Pretty good outing for Harris. It's a quality start for Harris. And like we've seen, the umpire will go out. Make sure Schmaltz is aware of what is expected here. Off for Newfoundland in the bottom of the six. In regards to Softball Canada the regulations. Number eight, Nathan Kenny. Nathan Kenny's leading off here. He's in left field today. Swinging strike there from Kenny. Two strikes for Schmatz. He'll waste one outside. And we'll have our second visit here. And we can look at the adjustment here. If, if it's the third base umpire, I would think it would probably be a pause issue, Scott. Generally, the plate umpire, from my understanding of umpiring mechanics, would look after the shoot, while the third base or first base umpire would be looking after the pause. Now the coach for Newfoundland looking for it to be a ball. Now after so many warnings, they will award a ball um, as opposed to a warning. Yeah, it looked be. like a pause issue judging by the hand gesture. You were right. And Kenny pops one up into shallow center. Play's made and there'll be one away. First baseman Jordan Hamilton due up here. With one out, the batter is the first baseman, number seven, Jordan Hamilton. Hammy, as his teammates are referring to him from the dugout, will look to get something going. Newfoundland with five outs to go. Good eye there from Hamilton to leave that high. That pitch is low from Schmatz, who's working off the right side of the slab. For those looking on at home, seeing the depth, they're pitching from 46 feet this week. The swinging strike. Schmatz set. And fouled off. They made some improvements to the screen here, Scott, at the Carp uh, Diamond 1 to prevent balls from flying over onto Juanita Avenue behind us. They put up some additional netting and just part of some of the many improvements that were done to this facility to get ready for the national tournament. Facilities in tip-top shape and the diamond being worked on for now the third day is holding up very nicely. And we do need to tip our caps to the volunteer grounds crew um, who are out there between every game, raking, dragging, and watering the field. And another foul there by Hamilton. I must say, I know a lot of the diamonds across our area, Scott, the outfields are kind of yellow and dry because we haven't had a whole lot of rain, but the folks here at the carp facility brought in Sullivan Agro, a local agricultural consultant, and he gave them some tips and the outfields look great and feel great, just like golf, just like golf fairways. And a call there on the outside corner for strike three to Hamilton. He didn't like it. And Adam, to your point, I don't think With I've seen the grass this the nice at the carp diamonds. And green. tip of the cap to everybody involved. And the players at this level deserve a top facility for the Canadian Championship. A great week so far will continue. We do have a game coming at you later tonight with an 8.30 start. The host, Osgood Chiefs, will 
play the Owen Sound selects. Pitch is high from Schmatz. Adrian Green, catcher, batting on the left side of the plate. Singled his last at bat. A good pitch from Smaltz for a called strike. Schmaltz takes the sign, steps back. And hammers the glove again for another called strike. Schmaltz is throwing hard. He pitched earlier today and still seems to have a lot of gas in the tank, Scott. Coming in for the last six out. Bearing down. Fouled off there by Adrian Green. As we get into the evening, still a decent crowd out here tonight at the Cart Fairgrounds. And it looks like an off-speed pitch there. It's fouled down the first base side. Our facility is accompanied with an indoor arena, an outdoor arena, agricultural space for horses, cow shows. Fouled off there by Green. Splash pad, tennis courts. Tennis courts. Now the splash pad has been getting work from both the young kids as well as some players using that to cool off with, with the two games a day. Sometimes there's not enough time to get back to hotels where they're staying. Called strike three on the outside corner.
Welcome we back for the top of the seventh here. Seven. New pitcher seven. on the hill for Will Newfoundland Major. Physio and Co. Mitchell Whalen. Adam, you got to see him pitch earlier today? Yes, he threw very well earlier today. And he'll face the top of the order here for Saskatchewan. Ball outside to Will Major. I think this gets to what you said earlier. Everybody on Delisle has seen, uh, saw uh, power three times. So we're going the fourth time through the order, and that's often a good time to make a switch if you have a quality guy coming out of the pen. Absolutely, Adam. And three importance out here. We're still in a one-run game for those just tuning in. Delisle Protection Pride, four. Newfoundland Physio and Company, three. Whale in the pitch. And that's fouled off Major's foot. He'll shake that one off. It's not my bad, is it? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> And he'll go for some new lumber. Looks like there might be a cracker split. And the option was handed to it Major was, it for was. Adam Brown's lime green <laughs> Ronin. So with plenty of pop in it. Well, all, all kinds left in it, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll stick to the Eastern brand. A one two count here to Major. Whalen gets the sign, steps back. And that's high. That'll even the count of twos here. Nobody out. Major leading off. Swinging a miss for a K. So both relief pitchers coming in here, Adam. Throwing a the little bit harder with some more gas in the tank, getting some strikeouts. Absolutely, that was gas right there. Good pitch. The umpire just checking on the shoot, making sure the mound is in good condition. The umpires do a great job at both making sure the regulations of the game are held at a standard, but as well as the safety of the players. It's a big honor for these guys to be here too, Scott. They have to go through a selection process to make it to a national championship, so we should have our country's best here this week. Kuzmeka hit one hard over into Diamond 2 his last time up. Yeah, and following that, Scott, he made a, an excellent defensive uh, scoop on that play on a ground ball. Absolutely. Now the Newfoundland coach will come out here after the illegal pitch was called. As mentioned earlier, the illegal pitch results in a ball. Commentary coming from the bleachers. Got a good game here going in the top of the seventh. Whale and set. As he falls to his knees, called strike. Whale and will dig out a hole for himself. Minka ready in the box. Falling to his knee again. Whalen's really having an issue there with the pitching circle. Maybe we need the ground screw here, Scott. I'm not sure, but 
clearly he's having some issues with uh, his landing spot. Now he's the fourth, pitch, fourth pitcher to get into the pitcher's circle during this game. And as you know from your years at the Diamond Adam, most pitchers can find their holes that they're landing in. And as the more people get in there, the bigger the holes get. Yeah, and some pitchers are extremely particular. Others less so, but... Games changed over the years. When I first started playing fast pitch softball, you towed up and took a step and threw. It's evolved over the years with stepping back and leaping and so on, and the landing position has become more and more critical for the pitchers as they deliver the ball. Yes, I'm not old, Scott. Now, I'm just wondering, have we seen... Lenny Berger toe tap? <laughs> there are not too many people in many ways that are the equivalent of Lenny Berger and the toe tap. Lenny, if you're watching, it was great to see you out at the alumni night held right here at the Carp Agricultural Building. One of the great fundraising initiatives done by the committee over the past couple of years to raise funds for this event. It's great to see it finally draw into fruition. Yeah, that was a fabulous night, Scott. Great memorabilia was raffled off. Lots of the local past and current players out to celebrate and share stories. One and two the count here to Kuzminka. Whalen takes the sign. Now one skied out to right field. And not going to be able to make a play for it in foul territory. Great effort by Nash there, though. A great run in by Joel Nash. He's going to be due up in the bottom half of the seventh inning for Newfoundland. And the two and two count continues here to Kuzmenka. Whale and set. Very interesting. Whalen pitched on this diamond earlier today, and I don't recall him having similar landing issues. And worried about him twisting an ankle or something out there right now. And a good hard dipper there. I guess from I need, I guess I need not worry. That was a great pitch. Now the one thing with these gravel infield diamonds, um, as the, the heat the and the, the day progresses, the, the fields do dry out. Weedy. This morning that was obviously no issue with the rain, keeping the fields wet and the dust down. Two out here for Brant Weeb digging in. He takes a ball outside. Both the Ottawa Valley Chiefs and the Owen Sound Selects have moved over to the side of the Diamonds to prepare for their game, which is scheduled to start at 8.30. Ball's hit hard out to right center. That's going to touch the fence. Weave coming hard to third, and he's down. And an unfortunate turn of events there. Weave caught a rut coming from second to third. He'll be tagged out for the third out. And we'll be right back here in the bottom of seventh. Delal Protection Pride 4, Newfoundland Physio and Co. 3. That just blew a sidewall. No.
And we're back here for the bottom of the seventh. And Whale, er, uh, Schmaltz is back in. What did you see from Whale in there? Well, he really did his job, Scott. He came in, got the three outs that they needed. And now it's up to the Newfoundland Physio and Co. Bats to see if they can tie or win this game in the bottom of the seventh inning. Joel Nash due up. And we are getting a little bit of a shake off our tripod in center field. So if anybody out there is listening near the red stand, we could ask that it would just be left alone. Nash fouls one off to even the count at 1-1. One one. That's what it's about, Scott. One run game, bottom of the seventh, good crowd on hand, beautiful night for fast pitch softball. And I think we're going to get an exciting finish. We do have the top of the order coming up here after Nash. On the diamond, two out in left field. Tavistock was out to an early 1 nothing lead over Alveson. Schmaltz leans back. Dribbler back to him. He'll make the play over to first base, and there's one away. Jordan Pomeroy, two up with here one with out one out. Is the center fielder, number 20, Jordan Pomeroy. Really only was that third inning where Newfoundland got anything going, Scott. They, they squeezed out their three runs in that inning on four hits, but besides that inning, they've only got two other hits in this game coming into the seventh. They've got two outs to go. It's a pitch from Smots. And foul back to the screen. Pomeroy shakes his head as if he liked that one. This is where Newfoundland wants to be though, Scott, as you said, the top of the shop here. That's, that's their best hitting guys right here. That one's hit out to center field and deep. Center fielder back on the track. Makes a nice catch on the warning track. Pomeroy just missed that one. The 240 fence. Two away here for Liam Shea coming up. Looking to get something going. He had a sack in the first inning. With two out. Coming to bat for Newfoundland. The shortstop, number nine, Liam Shea. We take a break from commentating. You can hear the noise coming in from the infield and the fans. No swing on the check. Shea digs in. Swing strike at a hard drop ball on the inside part of the plate. Schmott set, pitch. Oh! And as they say, anyway, Adam. Absolutely. In seventh inning. That's what that's what Newfoundland wanted. They wanted Stack coming to the dish. Stack do up here. Shea on first. Looks like he's going to stay in after wearing that one on the leg. With two out, the batter is the third baseman, number twelve, Mark Stack. Mark Stack, two for three on the day, Adam. Yep, a couple of RBIs too back in that third inning when they scored their runs. Schmaltz set. If you're a Newfoundland fan, you may use the expression, the right guy at the right time. As the chatter increases here, the pride cheer on their pitcher. Newfoundland edges on Stack. And he hits that one high, but out of play over by the tennis courts. Not far from that entrepreneur that was selling uh, snow cones. I don't believe he was a licensed vendor. He was about 14 and just set up a snow cone stand by the tennis courts. Yeah, so we did see him walking around with a big snow cone sign attached around his waist. 
And a one-two count here. Schmatz wasn't given in there. The entrepreneurial spirit alive and well in Carp. Runner on first, a 4-3 game, two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Stack holds off that high pitch. Even the count at twos. Bottom of the seventh. That pitch is down, a full count. Two out, tying run on first base. Some dream of this in the backyard, hitting a tennis ball. And he hits that one high. He's got a chance. Deep to right, Cut. fielder in, He's and he'll it. make the play. Terrific game of fastball this afternoon. Was That's indeed. The game, folks. Delisle Protection Pride. The Get the 4 3 four victory three. over Newfoundland Physio and Company. Both great, They'll both great finish game. with 3 and 3 records, Adam. What caught your eye this afternoon? Well, I tell you, that game, uh, the, the, the pitchers both threw well. Um, when, you, when you consider that the, the defense played excellently, when you consider the wasn't many strikeouts, we had Braden Harris earned the win, Scott. And he allowed three runs and six hits. The save was credited to Caden Schmatz. He threw two, run, uh, two innings scoreless with no hits. So great pitching performance from the Delisle Pride pitchers. On the Newfoundland uh, Physio & Co. side of things, Logan Power threw six innings. He only allowed four runs and six hits, but he was the hard luck loser there. And he had relief of one inning from Mitchell Whalen. So a, an excellent game from two evenly matched teams. Absolutely. We ask you not to go too far as the grounds crew gets out there to prepare the diamond. The 8.30 game tonight, we have the host Ottawa Valley Chiefs facing the 4-1 Owen Sound Selects.